What is your true story that you don't tell because it sounds like a lie? When I was 14, I went on a vacation to Hawaii with my family. We stayed at a fairly nice hotel along Waikiki Beach, and our hotel room happened to be at the very top floor, which was really high up there. Anyway, being the Mexicans that we are we had our own cooler full of beers with limes and lemons. I was bored so I decided to just hang out on the balcony facing the beach and fooled around with this lime. I really had the urge to throw it so when everyone else wasn't looking. I chucked this lime as hard as I could and watched it make its way towards the ground. The lime flew towards a small sidewalk path that led to the beach and, without missing a beat, struck a random person right in the freaking head. The lime exploded, and the person proceeded to pass out. I stood on this balcony quietly yelling oh crap but because I didn't want to get caught, I kept quiet. No more than 20 minutes later, an ambulance rolled up along the street and helped this random person on the sidewalk regain consciousness. All of this was happening while my family were inside enjoying the room. I brought this up to them about a year later and they think it's total bulls. Anyway if you happen to be struck by a random lime in Oahu, I'm really sorry. God dang limes. I had a springer spaniel named Jasper who loved eating milk bones. One day, though, rather than gobbling it down as soon as he got it, he just held it in his mouth. He then immediately ran to the door and demanded to be let out. For a few days, this cycle continued. I assumed he was burying them, but I could never find any bones or holes in the yard. One day, I decided to watch what he was doing from the window. I saw my dog run up to a tree put the bone down and then back up and sit down. As soon as he sat down, a big brown squirrel ran down the tree grabbed the bone and carried it up to a nest. My dog watched all of this and didn't move. Once the squirrel was back up the tree, he ran back to the house and wanted to be left in. This continued for a week or so. TL. DR. My dog would give his dog biscuits to a family of squirrels. Maybe he was being blackmailed by the squirrels. I once found $20,000 when I was 7 years old and I got caught at school for giving away $100 dollar bills. Seems that the money was from a bank heist not far from my school. Found the bag in the bushes as I was walked to school. Reward was $2,000 bucks divided by 3 because of all the luck. I found the money with 2 other friends. True story that I hate to recount but it's all true. This was back in 1988. I sense a little regret over not handling that differently. In high school I dated three very ethnically different girls. Didn't know until the third girl invited me to her house that they were each adopted into the same family. When I was 8, I was swimming in the ocean and felt something bump into me. I look down and I see what I think is a lobster. After a closer look, I realized it was an arm. A rotting arm with its flesh hanging off. There was the corpse just floating in the ocean that hit me. My god, poor 8 yo honkius, that would crap me up for life. Also, just in keeping with the post, you freaking liar honkius, shame on you. I was invited to attend Ramadan services at a masjid in Midtown. On my way there, while wearing a hijab, I crossed an intersection at the same time as a nun, a priest and an orthodox Jew. It was like the opening line of a joke. My great grandfather is a legitimate African prince my grandmother's a princess so I'm technically royalty but after telling people in primary school and second grade they made fun of me for lying so I never told anyone else. I imagine you have to read spam emails pretty thoroughly. When I was 16 years old, I was in my house by myself enjoying a little alone time. Suddenly I hear a spraying sound, so I go outside to hear what it is. I was shocked. Two men were tagging on my house. I spring into action and beginning fighting them I am territorial and aggressive. After having both of them at bay, a guy in the getaway car runs to me and stabs me with a screwdriver. Most people think I am lying even after showing them my scar in my abdomen. I thought the end of this story was going to be I am a dog. After enlisting in the Air Force in 2001, a kid with a nearly identical name, who had enlisted a week later, was sent to basic when I should have been sent. When I showed up ready to leave for basic, they had no clue what was going on. I had already taken leave from college and said my goodbyes, so when I came home later in the day, everyone thought I wussed out and didn't want to go. I ended up staying in the military as a reservist and was honorably discharged without ever going to basic. 
About two years later, while hearing attendants called out in a local university, two of my friends heard this kid's name called. They went over and asked him if he was in the Air Force and he told them a story about how some butthole enlisted before him and got him sent to basic 6 months earlier than he planned. I've been in the Air Force for 15 months now, after seeing how they do paperwork, it'll vouch for you 100%. I almost got myself, my boss and 4 co-workers killed by a charging rhino on my first day of work. Okay, so the story is I had been hired to work on a private zoo with miles and miles of free roaming area for all of the animals. The giraffes had fields of green and trees, the lions had a big grassy area separate from them and the rhinos had a big rocky area with a pond. We drove around in jeeps and were taking a break in the giraffe enclosure. They had just finished giving me the grand tour and were talking and joking about what an awesome place to work it was when we all fell silent. There, across the clearing, staring at us, a huge butt rhino. Someone had left the gate between the rhino and the giraffe pen open. My boss shushed us all immediately and started whispering about getting back in the jeep and she'd get us all out of there. So we all worked our way back to the car and got in. Unfortunately I have a nervous behavior when I am scared and that is to laugh uncontrollably. So we get to the car and I start belting crazy sounding laughter out and everyone around me panics. The rhino pins its ears and starts to stomp towards us. Not charging yet but building speed. Two of my co-workers tackle me in the backseat and shove their hands over my mouth while my boss floors the jeep backwards out of there. I was fired when we got back to the main station. No hard feelings though. Twist, your job is an ice cream truck driver. I posted this a couple months ago, when my father was young, him and his brother were out in the woods chopping trees for firewood. At the end of the day they had to cross a small river to get back to their house. My dad jumped over the river and my uncle said that we would throw the axe across to the other side. He threw the axe too hard and the blade went into my dad's head, hitting him right behind the ear. My uncle thought he had killed my dad and ran off and hid in the forest for the night. My father pulled the axe out and managed to stagger home, where he was taken to the hospital. The doctor said if the axe had gone 2 centimeters deeper, it would have killed him. This is impressively dumb. My neighbor went to the Virgin Islands and came back talking about pirates all the time. Got replica swords guns, giant fish tank, flags, etc. One night he got drunk on rum of course, destroyed his apartment and attacked his girlfriend. She came running to my place and I called the cops. He broke the glass on my door and yelled, ARRRR you're a manly man at me. It was a small down so the state troopers, county sheriff, and town PD swarmed, nothing better to do, and he was arrested in minutes. In the aftermath we found a sword through his fish tank with dead fish water all over, a Christmas tree thrown out the front door onto the GFs, now smashed, car, tables flipped, picture shelves off the wall, and the cops found loaded muskets by the door. That was the day my pirate neighbor went crazy. Air, the sea does strange things to a man. While tripping face on shrooms I saw a friend toss a blunt to some kid. The unbelievable part is that the other kid didn't make any attempt to catch the blunt. Yet it landed perfectly between his fingers in the same position one would hold a cigarette. Everyone who saw started freaking out but this kid just looked up, eyes half closed, and said, That's what's up. It was ridiculous. That's so beautiful. It has to be true. The three different times my cell phone gets pickpocketed, I always notice the guy taking it and ask them to give it back. They give it back in shock. Whenever I try to tell this story, I feel like I always have to stop myself because I just feel like the person I'm telling it to won't believe me. Two friends and myself saw a bus burning on the interstate exit. We pulled over and it was still full of people. We saved those people's lives. Lots of small children. After we got them and some necessary belongings up the ramp, the bus fully engulfed in flames and the windows blew out. We all could have died, but we helped those people. We saved them. Felt good, man. I was playing truant from school one day and was walking through a patch of local marshland when I heard a droning buzzing sound. All of a sudden from the bulrushes a huge dragonfly hovered up. I swear this thing literally had a wingspan of over a foot long, it was massive. Yet everything I've ever read about dragonflies since says that specimens of that size haven't existed since the time of the dinosaurs. I saw it though, 
clear as day, about 3 feet in front of me. Then it flew in one direction and I ran screaming in the other. Welcome, to Jurassic Park. I think my stepson stepmom killed her children and tried to kill him. She has used her kids deaths to receive charity donations and been on multiple TV shows. I think she has some weird Munchausen syndrome by proxy brought on by years of childhood molestation and that she has made it her life's mission to show the world that she is a victim. You might want to bring that up to police. I have posted this before, but people still call bulls all the time so here goes. Worked at a video store for quite a while in my late teens early 20s. One day a guy, who looked to be about 18 or 19 walked up to the register, sheepishly pulled out a folding pocket knife and told me to give him all my money. The counter I worked behind was elevated by about 2 feet and only had one entrance which this guy was nowhere near, so there was zero chance of him even being able to touch me. For some reason, this guy just really pee me off. I said no. He said what and I said no again. He then said I don't want to do it but I will cut you man. I then began to yell if you cut me you better cut me freaking good because if I get one hand on you I will freaking end you. I will freaking rip your goddamn head off. As I am screaming this at him I am climbing over the counter towards him and he is starting to retreat towards the exit quickly. He made it out before I reached him, so I opened the door after he left and yelled something like you better keep running. If I ever see you again you are freaking dead. I have never been afraid of a fight but if this guy had a gun or serious blade this would have never happened. I was just so pee off at the idea of him trying to rob me with a 3 inch folding pocket knife that probably couldn't cut butter. God that story still pisses me off. I remember reading this. I used to work at a grocery store. One day a lady comes in and says, would you believe me if I said I had a squirrel between my breasts I could only respond with. What she then proceeded to reach between her bosom and retrieve a living squirrel. The thing looked around and then buried itself back into her shirt. I wrote the lyrics to a song that currently has almost 20 million views on YouTube. But I'm contractual prohibited from disclosing my role, as the artist is listed as the lyricist on the official credits. A friend and I found $10,000 of stolen money when we were 16. Returning it was the worst decision I've ever made. Yeah, they were probably insured and made no freaking difference to the person bank you returned it to. But you're a morally strong person. Stupid, but strong. When I was a little girl I kept hearing a chewing sound coming from my ceiling. I would cry to my dad every night complaining of monsters being in the attic. After about a week, I brought my dad into my room and pointed to the corner of my ceiling. The ceiling was literally pulsing. My dad went over to it and poked the corner with a pencil. Bees. Freaking bees chewing through my ceiling. MFOs chewed right through the floor in my attic. I have a fear of bees and when I try to explain, no one believes bees can eat through that crap. I had a similar one, but they were in the wall. No one believed until honey was seeping through. I had a fling with a future playboy model and Baywatch girl. Okay, Baywatch nights, but still. That my uncle is Troy Palamalu. Everyone says that just because we both have big hair doesn't mean that we're related. Copy paste from a very similar thread. I went to college at Belmont University in Nashville from 1999 until 2002. While I was there I worked for record labels as did a lot of my friends who were all in the music business program. Well, one buddy worked for a label called Red Hill Records as an intern gopher and entured servant. So, on occasion we would go to events and meet industry people and artists as this was a small label. They had an artist that we became friends with named Katie Hudson who was a singer-songwriter and about 17 years old. We hung out all the time since we were just 18 ourselves and had nothing to do but study and bum around coffee shops. As our friendship developed my roommate developed a huge crush on her. She never seemed to reciprocate the feelings so I asked her what was wrong with him. You know trying to be a good friend, and she revealed that she liked me instead of him. So, since I wanted to be a good friend I had to turn her down because of his feelings for her. That girl went on to be Katy Perry. I crap you not. I've read this story a lot in a couple of other threads. You spread it like you are proud of it. If you are, I suggest you try getting in contact with this girl, even just for the excuse of getting up votes for delivering. Something might come out of it once you have broken the ice with her. 
I once saved a person's life about 4 years ago from one of those giant patio umbrellas with those dangerously pointy spikes on the top during a hurricane. We were outside cleaning stuff up so it wouldn't get blown away. Next thing I know the umbrella comes flying by me extremely fast. I had my back turned so I didn't see it until it was passing me. I instinctually grabbed the handle as it flew by me. Stopped it about 2 feet away from going directly into my dad's gf's neck. The dang thing tugged me off the ground and made me faceplant the deck. She had her back turned. When she saw me face first on the ground she asked what happened. Told her and she didn't believe me. Never got a thank you to this day. Well then, thank you for saving her. My great great grandfather was the captain of the Titanic. People always look at me with disbelief when I tell them. My great great uncle drowned on the Titanic. True, I demand reparation. One time I found a wallet in downtown Chicago with $950 in it as well as 4 American Express cards and 5 Visa cards. I turned it into the hotel I found it outside of. While me and the desk manager were inspecting it we saw the id photo was of a certain basketball player named Kevin Durant. Who happened to be playing against the Bulls that night. When I was in middle school I was very shy. I didn't like most people. I was bullied. I had no self esteem and thought about suicide almost daily. The only thing I feared more than suicide was failing at it. I knew my parents would lock me up and I'd be considered the crazy kid at school if I failed to succeed, which I thought was a fate worse than death. I rarely talk about this not just because it's personal but I know people who didn't know me back then would not believe me because of how I am today. I am now, and have been for quite a few years very outgoing, confident, healthy, considered attractive by many, and passionate about my job. It's amazing how much you can learn and grow from past experiences. Hey you, good job. I was in a NYC subway station once and I saw two people, both in dark glasses and carrying white canes, walking through the station. One of the two clearly had done this before and was escorting the other. All I could think the whole time was holy crap. The blind leading the blind I knew I was never going to see that again. Slipped and fell. Hurt my ankle pretty bad. While I'm on the ground moaning, I spot a 200 pound satellite dish ripped by a gust of wind from the nearby 15 story building. I yell and gesture, pointing at the sky. By the time anybody eventually look up, the wind has gently dropped the dish on the flat roof of the next building. Everybody thought I was crazy, until the day after when the janitor goes on the roof to check and finds a huge satellite dish, in perfect condition, that wasn't there the day before. One time I ripped an apple in half with my bare hands. It was awesome but I never tell anyone and no one was even around. YouTube this, it's a thing. The time I hitchhiked across Australia with some drug smuggling hex angels. Well, okay, I did tell the story on Reddit once, for a grand total of 5 upvotes, never again. Had an impromptu threesome in China with two Chinese women and lost my virginity in the process. Well, sometimes I tell that story, but people rarely believe me. One time in NSW, Australia, I was at home by myself and I heard this loud noise outside my house. I looked outside my window and saw a camel, a freaking camel. There was some dude that was riding it and I got went outside and told him, oh I mate ever heard of a car I keep telling this to everyone but they never believe me. Wish I got a pic lol. I have an awkward crush on someone who everyone I know, myself included, is convinced has an awkward crush on me. We both avoid talking about it. It is super complicated. But the part that is unbelievable to most is that he is a celebrity. Kind of and I am not. I had a pair of students in my classes when I was teaching high school. A brother and sister named Benjamin and Aileen Dover. No one believes that a parent could be that cruel to their child, and they assume I am just propagating an urban legend. When I was about 7 years old I was driving with my grandfather to a public water source on the trailer of his tractor to get water for his garden. He was doing that a couple of times each summer as he had a big tank in his garden, which provided for a while. On the way to the source I was hit by something that burned right through my shirt. 
Of course I was shocked for the moment and wanted to get rid of whatever hit me. It was really hot on my skin but only for a second. I lifted my shirt and saw a tiny stone that fell on the bench of the trailer right next to me and then on the street. I thought it must have been from a bird that crap on me, so I never told anyone. Years later, I had not thought about it for half my life. I realized that the most unlikely thing happened to me. I was really excited when I realized this and told it a couple of people. No one cared. So frick it. Got hit by meteorite and it did not change my life. I am not telling that to anyone anymore since. Well try it yourself. TL. DR. Got hit by a meteorite. Hot little stone. When I was in college I went to a buddy's bachelor party on the lake of the Ozarks. We rented a couple of pontoons and set out, about 20 of us. Eventually, we came upon a cove with a lot of activity and tied up next to a huge cruiser. On the boat were two 20-ish year old topless girls with the biggest fake tea I have ever seen. Just walking around. We ask around and find out it is Jimmy, the owner of Jimmy John's sandwich shop who owns the boat. Eventually he comes out from under deck, calls over to us, and starts throwing sandwiches overboard to us. To this day even my wife doesn't believe this story, even though it has been verified by several of my friends who were there. I was on my lunch break one evening, and near the retail store I worked at, was a, like, wall to block off a suburban community from the shopping center and freeway. Well, there was a gap in the wall you could pass through, and it would leave you in a little field, like, an empty lot at the end of a court. I was back there smoking. I had on a black hoodie, and black slacks. It was a dark winter night so, basically, I was invisible. This grey Dodge Charger comes tearing up the street, sliding to a stop at the edge of the field empty lot. Someone hops out of the passenger's side pointing something at me. Well, I don't mean at me intentionally, but, I was in all black at night in a dark field, and unfortunately, this guy was pointing his gun right at me. He discharged 5 shots. And I swear you could hear them sailing past your ears. They missed me, hitting the wall behind me, on either side of where I was standing. The guy hopped back in the car and sped off. I finished smoking, went back to work. I played B a pong with a playboy bunny at a random Halloween party. I was the third to arrive. She was there and said, let's play. I was kidnapped from Costa Rica, taken to Nicaragua. I was then forced to sell turtles to tourists so that they could release them into the wild. When I was 10 I was fishing for catfish late one night at the pond on our ranch. I went inside the house for a little bit to eat and left my pole in the pole holder with my line still cast out. When I came back my pole was gone. Nowhere to be found. Fast forward to 10 plus years later when my cousin catches a catfish in the same pond and notices another hook in his mouth. Pills on the line and there is my old rod and reel. Poor fish drug my pole all up and down that pond for a decade. The reel still works, by the way. Alright. So one time I was getting Chinese food and I went into the place and ordered. While I was waiting a man walks in. He was very sweaty. Dressed formally. He goes over to the counter and orders. His voice was very shaky. And I saw the back of his pants move. I was very confused. It happened again. And again, it was as if he had a little piston arm on each butt check that would randomly push one side of his pants back. To this day I have no freaking idea what happened. TL. DR. Strange man with a mechanical butt orders Chinese food. Once, quite a few years ago, I was waiting at a red light, the first one at the intersection, and it was rush hour. I could look over and see the crossing road's green light. So I watched it turn yellow, then red. The odd part, no one stopped. I guess the first guy decided to run it, and the second one too. The third guy must have figured well, since they're doing it, and it just got to the point where no one stopped due to some perversion of mob mentality. It was two lane traffic too. The cars behind me honked like crazy cause all they could see was the green light and no one moving. They didn't know the traffic was still going full throttle though a red light. I just waited out my green light, then their green light, then when it turned red for them again everyone stopped. No one ever believes me. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.